on a team with a magical point guard, a legendary center, and a glamorous coach, he didn't always get the spotlight. And yet James Worthy played one of the leading roles in Showtime. Finishing off the Laker fast break, Worthy was at his best when the stakes were highest. They called him Big Game James. He's our subject this week. It's always been a great game, but now it has a new spirit. He dunks like Dr. J. He might be the new Ice Man. Well, the modern day, Will Chamberlain. He looked like Magic Johnson. The future has arrived. You are watching what greatness is all about. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Vintage NBA. I'm Robin Roberts. In their glory days of the 1980s, the Lakers were known as Showtime. And one of their stars takes center stage this week. He's James Worthy. During his 12-year career, Worthy helped build the L.A. dynasty and became one of the NBA's greatest small forwards. Today, there's another high-flying forward who's trying to pick up where James left off. He's Dallas Mavericks all-star Michael Finley. And this week, Michael is in the chair, right on the playground, with his memories of James Worthy. In Lowe's, pass the ball off nicely. They double pass, they pass the ball away to Scott. Dallas drags right away, and Scotty's got it down the middle of Magic, right side to Worthy, laying up and in. That looks like the Lakers. Growing up, watching the Lakers in Showtime, that's what basketball was all about. Here's Magic intercepting a pass. Ball in Lowe's, Whoa, Worthy, 360, yeah. and he scored it! He did one of those impossible turns! the premier uh, small forward or power forward, the kind of guy who can get up and down the court, run with the guards, a guy with great hands, who always can finish under around the basket. One guard's dream. The first step is a great weapon to have. Magic's still looking at it with He takes it in there, dribbles around his hand, underneath scores. He left Drexler high and dry like he's done all year. And James Worthy had one of the best first steps in the game's history. Oh, Worthy loses Wilkins underneath with a slam dunk. Oh, my, what a shot. It was kind of deceptive. He didn't look like he can uh, out quick a lot of people, but his first step usually got him to the middle, let him dunk on somebody, or just do a finger roll over somebody. James wants to do it, round the glider does, lay it up and in. The goggles with Vince's James Worthy. Not too many people can get away with, with wearing goggles in the basketball game, but James Worthy was one of those guys who could get away with it. He made wearing goggles look cool. And when he had them on, I think guys in the playground didn't really need goggles, but they wore goggles just to be like James Worthy. The ball down the middle of Hanson. Four on the clock, shot blocked by Magic. The Worthy, the Scott, four on one. The Magic, the Worthy, slam dunk. The ultimate fast break. Magic doing one of his no-look passes to Worthy. And Worthy just going through the lane with his patent in one hand dunk. Magic no look to Worthy underneath score. Magic flying, timeout. It's a great feeling when you're going down a break and you know that your point guard is setting up a nice pass for you to finish. Up ahead to pack. Behind the back to Finley. Your hands get sweaty, your mouth starts drooling. And when you get the ball, you just take it to the rack. And if anybody's in your way, you either go through them or go over them. Oh, Michael Finley, a spectacular play. And that's what James Worthy did, and that's what I like to do. Maxwell, missing outside. The foul was on Rambis, his second. Here's another break. Worthy, and a foul. Those games back in the day against the Lakers and Celtics were great battles. Bird against Cooper. Johnson doubles in a steal by James Worthy. It's Worthy all the way. You had premier Hall of Famers on both sides with, with Bird, McHale, and Parrish. And on the other side, you had Magic, Cap, Kareem, and James Worthy. I mean, those are the type of games people dreamed about being a part of. Nice play. There's Scott taking it away from McHale to Magic. Right side to Worthy. Score it! Basket counts! Whatever the game called for uh, big shots and big plays, James Worthy was the guy. 
And a guy you, you like to have the ball in his hands when uh, the crucial situations. Imagine you knew who to get a ball to. If, you, uh, if they were doubling Kareem all the time, you always had James Worthy on the other side, able to knock down the big shot or take it to the basket and make something happen. Big game, James. Michael never got to play against James. He entered the league one year after Worthy retired. But he did get to test his skills against another NBA legend. While still in high school, Michael was chosen to play a game of horse against another Michael named Jordan. Needless to say, Finley lost. But it did teach him a few things about playing under pressure, which is something James Worthy knows all about. And we'll look back at Worthy's brilliant career when we return. He had the quick spin move, he had the drop up, he had the quick, he had the quick little, uh, almost little flick shot coming across the middle, little runners. Worthy, defense by McHale now. James would, uh, you know, literally lead people in the dust. James has had a unique combination of just speed and size that I hadn't seen before. If you lost him for a second, he's dunking the ball on you. If he has a ball on the post, uh, he can spin or go around you, and he always played big in big games. When you think of the Lakers of the 80s, certain images will always endure. For example, Kareem Skyhook, Magic starting the break, and James Worthy finishing it with one of his trademark dunks. Throughout the 80s, James was a key ingredient in the Lakers' success. He earned three championship rings, and when he retired, he left a legacy as one of the game's top clutch performers. This is a day that, that uh, I'll always remember. Uh, I can remember 12 years ago when I signed at Loyola, and I'll remember today uh, as, as my last day as a Laker. Coming down. You know, you got to shake, rattle, and roll first, and then don't even look. Nice. Oh, oh, it was all the movie stars, it was Hollywood, it was magic, it was alley oop. It was just a fast paced showtime. Down the middle of magic, right side to Worthy, and looks like the Lakers. He played the game uh, kind of like a, a Jerry Rice would uh, play football. Magic was a quarterback. You knew it was coming, but you know, he, he ran the pattern and he ran the route so good that it was difficult to stop him. Seconds, so and then we lost in seven games. Every championship team needed a James Worthy, it was willing to play the role as third guy behind Kareem and Magic. from point A to point B in the game and learning how to take the first three steps out of the blocks and have that edge. The Lakers with three timeouts left on 20. Oh, Worthy loses Wilson. Underneath for the slam dunk. 
He had a quick spin move. He had the drop tip. He had the quick, he had the quick little, uh, almost little flick shot coming across the middle. Little runner. Worthy, defense by McHale now. James would, uh, you know, literally leave people in the dust. Back-to-back -back hadn't been accomplished in over 19 years, and that was our challenge. This was a point where I said, okay, now, my turn, give me the ball, let's, let's go on, and I wanted it. It was time for a new kid on the block to step up and and take control, and that was the first time I've ever really done that. James Worthy gets his 33rd point. I love James Worthy, I, everything he stood for in his career. The Lakers are back-to-back -back champions, the first team to do so in 19 years. We knew that this would really uh, clarify that we were one of the greatest teams that ever played. Big Game James, that, that nickname fits him perfectly because that's what he was. The highest praise of Worthy comes from those who watched him over the years. Former coach Pat Riley said there's never been a better small forward. The man who drafted Worthy, Jerry West, called him the consummate team player. As for Magic Johnson, he says he was just grateful he had a player like James to pass to. Up next, a trip to North Carolina with Worthy and some other famous Tar Heels. But first, back by popular demand, here's some vintage vinyl tunes you'd rather forget. James Worthy played in a city of glamour, glitz, and movie stars, but he wasn't originally an L.A. kind of guy. As we check his bio on NBA.com, we find out that James Worthy grew up in the small town of Gastonia, North Carolina. North Carolina is known for producing great basketball players, but Tar Heels from all walks of life have earned a place in history. You'd have to begin with Sir Walter Raleigh, the famous English writer and explorer. In the 1580s, he established the first British colony off the coast of North Carolina, and the state capital Raleigh is named after him. Now, while Sir Walter made history on the high seas, Richard Petty did it on the track. The man known as the King was one of the greatest race car drivers ever, a legend on the NASCAR circuit. He won seven Winston Cup championships. And how about Andy Griffith? You can almost hear the whistling now from his hit show of the 60s, set in the town of Mayberry. He played Sheriff Andy Taylor with Don Knotts as Deputy Barney Fife. One footnote, Andy's first role on stage was playing Sir Walter Raleigh. Two U.S. presidents were born in the Tar Heel State. President number 11 in your scorecard, James Polk, was born in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. And then the man who succeeded Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, the 17th president, was born in Raleigh. North Carolina also holds a place in aviation history. The Wright brothers made the first flight from Kitty Hawk in 1903. And the state was the launching pad for some great basketball careers that began at the University of North Carolina. The kangaroo kid, Billy Cunningham, grew up in Brooklyn. He first made a name for himself at UNC in the early 60s. From there, he went on to become an NBA All-Star with the 76ers. Now, he was followed to Chapel Hill by Bobby Jones, a native North Carolinian. Bobby went on to become one of the best defenders in NBA history and starred for the 76ers. Walter Davis went to the same high school as Jones and followed him to North Carolina. The Greyhound helped lead the Tar Heels to the 77 championship game and took his sweet jumper to the NBA with the Phoenix Suns. 
big, smooth Sam Perkins was born in Brooklyn but ended up on Tobacco Road where he was a three-time All-American and part of the team that won the 82 national title. The first for Coach Dean Smith. You might remember another member of that team, Michael Jordan and, of course, James Worthy. But for all the great players, the common thread over the years, the legendary Coach Smith. We've all been through his program. Uh, we're all products of his philosophies to a certain extent. Well, we've been very fortunate. I mean, to come out of a system that have, uh, has some great success in teaching the game of basketball, fundamentally as well as uh, mentally. And it's, I think it's helped a lot of us. And we've been fortunate to get on teams that we can actually show our skills and, and, and uh, excel. We all, uh, at some point in our minds, share something in common. And uh, that's, that's nice. It's, it's like a fraternity or like a, a, a special men's club or something like that. Today, the Carolina tradition is being carried on by players like Rasheed Wallace, Anton Jameson, Jerry Stackhouse, and Vince Carter. And it was at North Carolina where James Worthy first became known as a big game player, being named the MVP of the 1982 Final Four. James carried that reputation to the NBA, and you'll see the biggest game of his career when we return in just a moment. After winning the NBA title in 1987, the Lakers tried to become the first team in 20 years to repeat as champions. Standing in their way, the young and hungry Detroit Pistons, and they gave L.A. all they could handle. The series came down to a seventh game, and as usual, James Worthy would rise to the challenge. From the Airwave Archive, it's Game 7 of the 1988 NBA Finals. Here's a call from Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham. We're at the Forum in Inglewood, Game 7 of the NBA Finals. After this long, grueling, exciting season, the winner of this game is the champion. Pistons lead the Lakers by one, 4.23 to go first quarter. Sally makes one out of two, and it's a two-point Detroit lead. You now you say long and grueling. One team playing 24 games in the playoffs, the Lakers and the Pistons 23. Just unbelievable strength mentally for both ball clubs. There's the switch. Dumars matched up against Jabbar. Kareem looking for someone, and Cooper finds Worthy inside, and he gets it over John Sally. That was a tough shot over Sally. Tough shot, but great ball movement by the Lakers going one side of the court to the other. Tied at 15. Shooting percentages aren't even close. The game score is. Nine on the clock. Edwards with his familiar fall away shot. Rebound by Dumars. Throws it out to James Edwards. And again, we see the quicker Detroit team off their feet getting to the offensive boards. Cooper runs at Dantley. Dumars. And a foul hitting the deck was Joe Dumars. And we'll have a Laker foul. It'll be their fifth. Though. Now, here's Joe Dumars going to the offensive boards. This is a gamble for a guard. Because if he doesn't get the board, that means a fast break for the Lakers. Fifth team foul on the Lakers. Michael Thompson has replaced A.C. Green. Green goes out with two personal fouls. So thus far, Lambeer for Detroit and Scott and Green have been shouldered with two fouls. Trying to break the tie is Dumars, who is only seven for eight from the line in the series. So that's indicative of the fact that he hasn't had a chance to penetrate much. He hasn't looked for it. He settled for that jump shot. Now with the Laker team on the court, with Michael Thompson, James Worthy, and Al Abdul-Jabbar on the front line, they do not have a quick front line. But the Pistons are not quick themselves with Edwards. Sally can run, but without Rodman and Sally in at the same time, the Pistons don't have a quick group of their own. But I think they're quicker right now than the Lakers. Pistons by two, 3.20 to go in the first period. Worthy, who leads the Lakers with seven. Double teamed with nine on the clock. Leaves Cooper wide open for three. Oh. Sally knocks it over to Dumars. He's going to have a busy night, Joe Dumars. Quiet kid out of McNeese State. He's not going to get any rest tonight. Danley guarded single by Magic. Fires it up, and Michael Thompson clears. Lakers looking to tie it. 
crowd is hushed in anticipation of something here. Well, there hasn't been a great deal of excitement because of the great defense being played by both teams. Cooper ties the score. He's two for four from the field. That's going to do a world of good for his confidence. Well, Detroit is going to gamble on Cooper shooting that perimeter jump shot. He's got to prove to them that he can beat this Detroit team from the perimeter. Cooper doubling with Kareem on Edwards. Dumars open for three. And the three-point basket by Joe Dumars gives Detroit 20 to 17 margin. And Joe Dumars with seven. Dantley leads with eight for the Pistons. Thomas on the bench with two points, hobbling in this one. Under two minutes to go now in the first quarter. Worthy's been a big gun for the Lakers. Brings L.A. to within one. And he is so quick when he gets the ball down in the low post. Benny Johnson, who has yet to take a shot. What kind of game will he be on? Danley gets the basket and draws the foul and another amazing move by the guy who can twist in the air. And a heck of a pass by James Edwards finding him underneath. Danley has 10 points. Now here the play is broken down for the Pistons, but Dantley keeps moving, finds that open lane. Look at the contact, and he's going to be rewarded, rewarded with a foul shot. Here's the scene in Inglewood outside the forum where the Pistons have a three-point lead. James Worthy is having a good game for the Lakers. Nine points in deciding final games for Worthy. Look at those impressive numbers. Not bad. 24 points a game and shooting nearly 70%. Now, here's James Worthy. He doesn't get the credit deserving to him because he's playing on a team with two stars in Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But watch him move Sally up the lane with a dribble, freeing up the baseline, and he ducks back for that bank shot. Kurt Rambis has replaced Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who missed his only shot. Rambis has a total of six points and five rebounds in four appearances in the series. Remember, he was a one-time starter for the Lakers and now has had to work his way and make it happen on the bench. Not an easy task for Kirk. And he made things happen in game six coming off the bench, defensively and getting to the boards. Bandley now with 11 points, three of them from the line, and it's a 23 to 19 piston lead, the biggest lead for them. 120 to go in the first quarter. Sally now is matched up against Worthy. Who goes strong to the hook, gets the basket, and draws the foul. And right now, we're looking at a Dantley Worthy shootout here in quarter number one. And there we see Dan Worthy having the ability to hurt you on the inside. This time, he uses his great quickness and just throws a flip shot. What a shot right there. Foul was on Edwards, his first. Missed the free throw, so Worthy has 11 for the Lakers, and Dantley has the same number. Edwards nearly threw the ball away, and Vinny Johnson short with his first effort. Here come the Lakers. Cooper. Under a minute to go in the first. Lakers down by two. They're the defending champions, looking for two in a row. 19 years since it's been accomplished. Six on the clock. Cooper spots up for three. And Edwards. Sally going strong to the hoop. He missed that shot, but Billy, that's what the Pistons have to do. Yeah, but he got too cute. He should have made sure he drew the contact and got at least to the foul line making that move. There's a five-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, which you see. Waiting moments of the first quarter. Magic lost it for the moment. Tough defense. Cooper again at the buzzer. Tapped out, and the Lakers can now play for the last shot, and a long one misses at the buzzer. Tough defense, a little nervousness, perhaps, on the part of Detroit, but they came back from it. All right, it's still early, but James Worthy is leaving his mark on this game, just as he did throughout the 88 playoffs. That year, Worthy averaged 21 points, six rebounds, and four assists during the postseason. It's one reason Magic Johnson called James one of the top ten players in playoff history. We'll get back to his classic Game 7 performance in a moment. But first, oh, my favorite, a pop quiz about 
the Lakers in 1988 playoffs were a grueling journey. They battled through seven games against both Utah and Dallas to reach the finals. Then they had to deal with another seven-game war against the Pistons. Detroit had the younger legs, and it looked like they might just be ready to take the Lakers' crown. The Pistons are leading by five as we get set for the start of the second half. I don't know if this is an omen or not, but the team that has led at halftime in every game has won. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The Lakers don't know that, and the Pistons better not think that's uh, a guarantee by any means. Start of the third quarter. Danley out to Thomas. Didn't have control. Forced that shot up in the rebound by Magic Johnson. And Scott goes to the hook strong. And that's what this Laker team needs, a little emotion out here. This starting group, except for Worthy, were flat in the first half. 52 to 49. Worthy is on Dumars. Dandley, who scored all of his 11 points in the first quarter. Double team puts it up and scores, and Dandley is on the board. The Lakers shot 50% in the first half, Detroit 45%. And we see that John Sally is starting instead of Mayhorn. That's the first in this playoff series. Kareem double teamed. He struggled in the first half. Worthy's been everything. James Worthy has 22 points on 10 of 13, but he's going to need some help offensively from some of the other Lakers. Lane Beer popping outside. And Danley trying to keep it alive and does. Tied up by Magic Johnson and they'll jump it. Turnovers hurt the Lakers in the first half. They committed 11 of them to only three for Detroit. And the tip is run, won by L.A. 54-51 Detroit. Magic looking for Worthy. Sally guarding him. Throws it away to Thomas. He's got Dantley, Sally, and Dumars on the wing. Try to force the pass in. Doesn't have much movement. He is limping more than ever right now. James Worthy lays it in. And it's 54 to 53, and Thomas is struggling. Struggling, but they need him out here. As Chuck Daly said, he's just the inspiration to this ball club. Right now, the Pistons cannot handle the basketball carelessly against the Lakers. This crowd's going bananas. They're on their feet. Thomas. Kareem with the boards, and the Lakers looking to take the lead. And Worthy is hit and hit hard by a number of Pistons, including Beer and Dumars. And Beer may have picked up, we'll see, his third foul. Well, it'll be the third foul on either player, Dumars or Beer. and I'll probably Chuck Daly would say, hey, I'd rather have it on Beer, but it is on Dumars. Now here it is, this is where the Lakers have to do to play the game, out in the open court. And thank goodness James Worthy was not hurt on that play. Watch the Lakers always in third quarters. That's when they've gone to town and established their territory in many of the playoff games. And Chuck Daly at halftime said, we have to come out and, and establish what we did in the first half in the first five minutes. And so far, they haven't been able to do it. One of two for Worthy. James has 25. His playoff high, in this series anyway, has been 28. Dumars. And the Lakers will run again. Worthy. Lakers have broken the tie and lead seven straight points all by James Worthy. Timeout Detroit. This third period has started off just the same as the first period. Sally from Dumars. We'll go to the line. The Lakers are four for four from the field here in the third. Detroit 
one for six, one for five. Kareem picking his second foul is two on Abdul Jabbar, and Sally will go to the line. He has struggled a bit from the free throw line in this series. 10 of 15, all told. And one of three in this game. Pistons have already missed eight free throws. That hurt the Lakers in game number five. Might have lost it for them. They missed 13 in that game. Kareem hasn't come alive offensively, oh! but finds Magic Johnson on a familiar Laker play. Well, this is just a different Laker ball club in this third period. They're alive, they're active. It just looked like in the first half that they were mentally drained. Dumars trying to shuffle a pass. Scott intercepted. And the Lakers are six for six in the third. And we see that both teams are generating their offense from the defensive end of the court. Danley draws the foul. The Lakers wanted a jump ball, but Earl Strom said he was in the act of shooting. And Kareem looks like he's furious over that call. And that'll be his third personal. Three on Kareem. Yeah, Chuck Daly right there was very upset with Isaiah Thomas with, with something that was going on on the court. Danley will try to break an 11-1 Laker run here in this period. Now, if you're the Lakers, you want to keep it on a roll. You want to keep the same intensity defensively. The Pistons have got to move their defensive level up a notch or two. Interestingly enough, as impressive as the Lakers have looked starting this period, the lead right now is four. So no one really has moved out in this one. Well, four, but they've turned the tide to nine points to start this, this third period. So they're playing, though. The thing is, they're playing the style of ball which they are most effective playing. Winding down, four minutes gone by in the third period. Lost it to Danley. Good defensive play inside by the Pistons. Somebody knocked the ball away. Dubars. Green on Danley. Offensive foul, Adrian Danley. He ran into Magic Johnson. He forced something that wasn't there. Magic Johnson came over, had perfect position to draw that charge. Now here, watch Magic. He recovers defensively. Just standing there and waiting for Dantley. Two on Adrian. No one in any foul trouble. No one has picked up four to this point anyway. Seven and a half remaining in the third period. It's been all Lakers so far in this second half. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with his first basket of the game. In the first half, he hurt this Laker ball club. The second half, he's found magic for a layup, and there's this skyhook. L.A. hasn't missed yet from the field in this half. Thomas. Double on Sally. Danley. Loose ball, and here's Worthy and Scott two on one. Chuck Daly better get a timeout because right now the Lakers are flying. They're playing the best ball they've played all through the playoff series. Timeout, Detroit. So the Lakers are making their run as they try to nail down their second straight championship and fifth title of the 80s. Earlier in the decade, their biggest rivals, the Celtics. But then the Pistons emerged as the top team in the East. L.A. and Detroit met two straight years in the finals, and those matchups left a lasting impression on the Pistons' Isaiah Thomas. The battles that we had with the Lakers, you know, are probably some of the most memorable battles uh, that happened in that era. Those were great times. Those were great rivalries, and uh, it was true, hardcore competition, and that's, that's what people wanted to see. A great job that year. Going against that whole defense that they had, Rick Mahorn, uh, Lambeer being the bad boys and the, the, the tactics that they had, James was not afraid of that. And I mean, he gave it to him both hands. He's the type of player that you just want to go to. And when he gets hot, you're just feeding the basketball. 
and James was never hotter than in Game 7 of the 1988 Finals. Led by Worthy, the Lakers have managed to take a three-point lead late in the fourth quarter. Now, one year earlier, their coach Pat Riley had guaranteed that L.A. would repeat as champions. Now his players are trying to deliver on the promise. So let's return to the action with less than a minute left to play. They will explode if the Lakers can be the first team in 19 years to win back-to-back -back titles and become the team of the 80s and win their fifth world championship. And Billy, there were 54 seconds left in game six. Detroit had the lead. Now L.A. has the lead and the ball. Right, and, and Detroit wasn't able to score. Will L.A. be able to score? Worthy loses it on the drive. And here are the Pistons. Down by three. Rodman takes the jumper. Scott has it and gets out of trouble. Rodman threw up the jumper quickly. Too quick, should have looked for one of his teammates. That's not his shot, but the emotion of a ball game like this. Look at Chuck Daly. He wishes he got a timeout, that's what he's saying. And that is inexperience and over-exuberance by a young, very talented player in Rodman. But this is his second year in the league, and this is a big moment. And they wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for him in this ball game. What do you think Pat's thinking about now, huh? Well, one thing he told me for sure, I said, well, you, what are you going to do about next year? Are you going to say win this one for the big guy is last year? He said, all I'm going to say is, everybody, let's have a great summer. Kareem said, we'll get to him first before any predictions next year. 30 seconds to go, and the lead is five. Timeout, Detroit. Last five Laker points have come from the free throw line by their backcourt. Magic and Byron Scott. Security is out in full force to line the edges of the court. This crowd on its feet. Dumars loses the ball to Magic Johnson and the Lakers. Can virtually run out the clock. Foul against Detroit. Michael Cooper with two shots, and Pat Riley. <laughs> Went out on a limb last year, and a lot of his players didn't like it. But they'll love it if they continue and stay in the position they are in for 20 more seconds. He got it done, and no one else did in the last 19 years. Timeout Detroit, and the Pistons have used their last timeout. Crowd begins the celebration now. 20 seconds to go. 105-100. Rodman will inbound. Pistons need something quick. Vinny Johnson. And the follow-up. Joe Dumars, 105-102, and Lane Beer is forced to foul. And these will be the biggest free throws of the season for the Lakers and maybe in their franchise history. James Worthy, how fitting that he would be at the line to try to wrap it up. James Worthy has got to make one of these free throws right now. And now Isaiah Thomas comes back in with 14 seconds to go. Keep in mind, the Pistons are out of timeouts, and you know that on a missed or made free throw, the Lakers will make it as tough as possible for Detroit to bring the ball up. And what they do now is Chuck Daly has got three guards in the game. He's got four people that can shoot the three-point shot. He made the one. That's what he needed. Dumars to Thomas, nine seconds to go. Lane Beer fires a three and hits it. And it's 106 to 105. Pistons have got a steal. They're not going to get a chance. Green will win it. The game ends. The Lakers have won it again. in the Laker dressing room. They'll never forget this moment. Took 19 years to win them back-to-back. -back. Los Angeles Lakers do it again.
We're back inside the Lakers locker room. Angela and James Worthy. James, congratulations on being the MVP of this series. Thank you very much, Brent. Um, you know, this was a tough year, and we really had a lot to accomplish, but I would just like to say the reason why I was able to make it through this season is standing right here. Brent Angela, she stayed with me the whole year, supported me, ups and downs and everything, and she's responsible, too. Well, would you like to step up here and guarantee a third straight to start this off, Coach? <laughs> I'm going to guarantee one thing, that we're going to enjoy this all summer long. Pat Riley and the Lakers get to celebrate once again, and it was James Worthy who carried them to victory in Game 7. Now, how about this final stat line for the game? James finished with a triple-double, 36 points, 16 rebounds, and 10 assists. Worthy always did know how to finish things off in style. But he wasn't the only one. And up next, we'll look at some of the other fantastic finishers in NBA history. When Magic Johnson started the Laker fast break, it was often James Worthy who finished it. And he usually did it in style, flying in for a slam dunk. But before James arrived, the NBA had some other players who were known for their finishing touch. Going back to the 60s, there was the man known as Honeycomb, the Bullets' Gus Johnson. He battled inside as a power forward, but was also one of the game's high flyers, a player who could take off in the foul line and dunk. Then there was Darnell Hillman. He stood out not only for his afro, which was, you know, come on, it was huge even for the 70s, but also his leaping ability. Darnell finished off many a fast break during his days with the Denver Nuggets and the Indiana Pacers. Then in 1980, Dr. Duncan Stein came along, Daryl Griffith, who brought his high-flying jams to the Utah Jazz and helped keep them competitive until another strong finisher arrived in Utah by the name of Carl Malone. Another great jammer of the 80s, Larry Nance, who starred for the Phoenix Suns and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, this is one guy opponents always feared on the fast break as he would throw it down on anyone who dared get in his way. How about Orlando Woolrich, one of the game's most explosive players who had some great years with the Bulls in the 80s. Woolrich started to make Chicago a winning team, and then another finisher named Jordan came along and finished the job. Meanwhile, MJ's old college teammate, James Worthy, was filling the lanes in L.A. And today, a few other players also know how to finish, especially another former Tar Heel. I think that uh, Vince Carter is somebody that when he's got the ball in uh, transition or he's got the ball in half court, that when he gets to the rim, he's dunking the ball and finishing. Flashing the other way is Carter. Oh, my goodness. I like Shannon Anderson for a finish. I mean, I, I mean, out of everybody in the NBA, I like him. I mean, when he played with Utah, I mean, it's like he never missed when he was on the fast break. Never, never missed chippers, never missed layups. Always finished the ball. But I would probably have to say Kobe because Kobe finishes so good on the break, and he runs the break really well. Latrell Sprewell. Uh, I like Latrell Sprewell with one-on-one, -on -one finishing child back to Sprewell. Kevin Garnett with his size. Uh, he's a little bigger than James Worthy, but he has that quickness like James Worthy. Chris Webber. I think that uh, they're very similar in that they both get out and can really run the break. And I think that either, both of them, when they get the ball within 13, 14 feet of the basket, you know, you're going to have to meet him pretty much at the rim. I have to say me. You know, I love James Worthy. and uh, I'm a fan of his. And I think I'm a pretty good finisher on the break. I don't think you should get in my way. Pretty good advice from C. Webb, who casts one vote for himself. That's okay. If you'd like to weigh in on James Worthy or your own favorite finishers, just email us at NBA.com. Now, we've gotten a number of messages from viewers who are asking one question. When are you going to do a show on Pete Maravich? Okay, we've heard you. Hold all the emails. You're going to get your wish next week when we profile Pistol Pete. We'll be back with more Vintage NBA in just a moment. Stay with us.
As the Laker dynasty faded, James Worthy was the last link to the 88 championship team. And in 1994, James retired after 12 NBA seasons. A year later, his number 42 jersey was raised to the rafters. The curtain had come down on the Showtime era, but it was one of the most glorious runs in NBA history, thanks in large part to the role played by Big Game James. That's it for Vintage NBA. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Robin Roberts, and we'll look for you again next time. Take care. James Worthy is one of the most beautiful basketball players to have ever played this game. James Worthy. As I reflect back over 12 years of not only playing in this city of Los Angeles, but living here as a citizen, I can only say that it's been the most enhancing, the most rewarding, the most exciting experience that I've ever had as an adult.